if you fail to appear on a bail bond, the bail insurance industry is going to find you and we are going to put you back. We take what we do very seriously. The bail bond industry is a very profitable industry. Bail isn't set based upon one's ability to pay. They talking 500,000 million dollars. Like who got that type of money? What we're seeing is an enormous transfer of wealth of billions of dollars a year from the poorest people in our society to some of the richest people in our society, the insurance companies that are underwriting the bail bond industry. If there are two people who are arrested in a drug interaction and they come down to the police station and one of them has $300 and the other one doesn't, it's unconstitutional to cage the person who doesn't have that money, but to let the other person go just because she has money in her pocket. There are no other nations except the Philippines allowing bail bondsmen. They're not allowed anywhere else in the Western world. The man guy you, don't worry. Call East Coast Bail Bonds. 1% down, easy payment to $25 a week. East Coast Bail Bonds serves the entire Maryland region. Bail Bonds, how much money are you guys working with? Right now, they have like $400 or $500. That's fine, I'll get her out. You owe me a couple bucks. I finance people's freedom. You call us? I'll say, how much your bail? Say 10,000, okay, how much money you have? Well, I, I got money in the bank, okay. Who's gonna sign for you? The signer's a person that's gonna say that you're gonna appear in court. First off, when you bail out, you have to come in here, you have to do your paperwork. We call you for your court date. Some people are high risk, we make them check in every week. Because if you don't go to court, it's a potential for us to lose all that money. We catch a lot of people on Facebook. You get a good looking girl on that Facebook and every guy's biting. Women has brought down countries. We were the first ones to come up with a payment plan. This is your payments, this is how many payments, monthly, this, this, this. I got people pay 10 bucks a week. Try and get her to give us a call because she does have three accounts with us. So and then these girls here, was on so all they do is call people, day and night. And, and tell them that they owe us money. I met people that did very well off of like 25 million a year. I do 25 million in two months sometimes. The new B shirts loading in a truck now. And this is nothing. This is this is probably 4,000 shirts. Everybody knows Vinny does the shirts. Vinny does all the marketing stuff like that. I sponsor everything. My goal was to build a brand. When you come to Maryland, you think East Coast. <laughs> thank you, thank you. East Coast, y'all. We love people that come to the hood. A lot of guys just go in the phone books and do that bullshit. There are so many bail bondsmen down here, but you brand yourself. You gotta go out and attack the business and get the business. Hey, are you ready for this bikini contest? These case bail bonds in the house. Why can't I have every single bail? Why not? Is that wrong? You ever, you know, a guy fucking in, in a rich and says, oh, well, I don't want all the money, I just want some of the money. That's bullshit. I want all the bails. If I can't get all the bails, I'll settle for what I can get. But I don't like to sell, I want them all. Riverwatch, make some noise one more time. East Coast Bail Bonds for putting this together each and every week. We're on North and Fulton. Ask any police officer. This is considered one of the most dangerous corners in the city of Baltimore. So why not put an office on When the riots went down, we came down and gave our shirts. I'm looking at that they're distributing East Coast Bail Bond t-shirts. And I don't think that that could happen in other neighborhoods. Rocking y'all since 96. To me, I think it sends the wrong message. I bleed Baltimore. That could have a negative connotation about it, especially with the high murder rate that we have. But I guess as long as you feel as though that you're getting something free for nothing, and you're not, you're not the propaganda that they're putting out with these t-shirts, all you're doing is, is continuing to help demoralize your community. John, have no idea 
the hell is going on out here in the hood? If you have a baby and you ain't got no job, tell me what you're going to do. You're going to sling drugs. OK, now the post come get your ass. Then the bell bomber, here you come when you get caught all up. Every four years, there's elections. And you have to go through this whole education process all over again with a lot of the committees. Up until now, we've been able to get our point of view across in an honest way. So we've been able to stay uh, in business in Maryland. You got people that want to do away with the bail bond business that have no idea what the bail bond business is. We bail people out. Yes, we make money from it. We put them back in jail if they don't go to jail. Study it. Show me, somebody come tell me why they should do away with bail bondsmen. Alan was in the house, and a couple of his buddies came up and was like, yo, let's go downtown. They zapping out down there. Now the governor has declared a state of emergency. We see protesters there scuffling with police. That night, the news came on. We seen him on top of the car acting crazy. He was like, oh, Lord, I think I might need a lawyer. So we laughed it off. I'm like, Alan, you broke a car window. They're not going to make nothing out of that. My son took it on his own and turned himself in. When he called me back the next day, he said, Ma, guess what? I said, what? He said, my bill, $500,000, a half a million dollars. I said, boy, stop lying. What's your bill? He said, Ma, I'm not lying. I just dropped the phone, and I just started screaming. My son want to kill himself. That's how bad it is. Alan Bullock's case, an individual caught uh, on film destroying property, was given a bail much higher than even the police officers that were charged with the death of Freddie Gray. The pretrial bail industry is set up so that one has to put up security, whether it's cash or whether it's um, going to a bondsman and paying them a premium. But when you have to pay a bondsman 10% and you never get that money back, then people are, are literally paying tens of thousands of dollars just to get their loved ones out of jail. And there's no guarantee that those cases are even gonna go to trial. Bail isn't set based upon one's ability to pay. There are no standardization. Each judge um, determines bail on their own. Those with means um, get out and prepare for trial, and those that are poor sit. And they sit in cages. They sit in decrepit conditions for the most part. The average time is about seven or eight months in the state of Maryland where you sit prior to trial. And that puts enormous pressure once the case comes up for trial for someone to plead guilty just to get out of jail. Most guys can't afford their bail. They talking 500,000, million dollars. Like, who got that type of money? Your life on the line both ways. So you're trying your hardest to get out, but the money ain't going to get you out, so you got to take the plea. Well, I, I mean, even if you ain't guilty, you're just trying to get out of there. Pretrial detention has a disparate effect on minorities, on communities of color. On the day of Freddie Gray's funeral, over 400 folks were arrested. 263 people were detained, most of them without even charges being brought against them. They were just swept up in neighborhoods and brought to the detention center. Night of the ride. We were sitting on North and Fulton, where my cousin lived. Police and all that coming through. I told them I was going home. I was on the way to get to my kids and my girl. So they said no. Oh, they arrested me, threw me in the back of the paddy wagon, took me down to Central Book, and I didn't know what I was charged with at first. My bail was set to 250000 And then all the police got locked up. I'm like, dang, they locked up for manslaughter. Why is their bail the same as mine? And mine is. A, a petty chart. My girl was left with the two kids, and she had a job, and a lot of financial stuff got messed up because she had nobody there to help her. Like, everything just went downhill when I got locked up, everything. The thing that strikes me about Dominic's case is it exemplifies the problems with the bail system. He was given an exorbitant bail, something that I'd see normally in a, an extremely violent case, usually a felony case. His case ended up being dismissed by the state. 
after he spent over a month in jail on a, a bail that he couldn't make. We have 500,000 human beings in a cage on any given night in this country solely because they can't afford to make a payment to get out. And we've so lost sense of how brutal a thing it is to do to a human being, to cage them. For a long time, we were not in our society treating this issue as the emergency that it is. And the key is to understand why. And I think it's because when you do something so often, I think it's human nature to become desensitized to it. The 14th Amendment prohibits treating people differently. So if there are two people who are arrested, let's say in a drug interaction, and they come down to the police station and one of them has $300 and the other one doesn't, it's unconstitutional to cage the person who doesn't have that money, but to let the other person go just because she has money in her pocket. The fundamental principle in our legal system is you can't jail a poor person when in the same circumstances a rich person will be set free. I decided to apply these 14th Amendment arguments to our bail cases. This year, we've filed seven class action lawsuits challenging the American system of money bail. The first six cities have all agreed to get rid of the use of secured money bail for misdemeanor arrestees. One of the exciting things about this topic is that for so long, things have been happening that are so illegal that now that attention is being paid to them and light is being shed on what's been going on in these courts and jails all around the country, um, we're starting to see some change. There are no other nations except the Philippines and the United States who have made such poor decisions about allowing bail bondsmen. They're not allowed anywhere else in the Western world. Bondsmen are legal in Washington, but we don't have any bondsmen and haven't had them for a long time. Here in Washington, D.C., of the people coming in through lockup, a good 85 to 90 percent are going to appear in front of the judge. They'll end up being unshackled, handcuffs removed, and walking out the door of the courthouse because money is not used here. People are not remanded back to the jail in order to wait until a bail bond is you know, posted on their behalf. I'm Cliff Keen, and I'm the director of the Pretrial Services Agency for the District of Columbia. We believe our system is more effective than the money bail system. In fact, today, our jail is probably at 45% of its capacity because we're not seeing people being detained because they don't have the ability to put up money bail that's been imposed by a judge. In other jurisdictions, the judge is not looking at the individual risk factors associated with the person, they're only looking at the charge. Here, our risk assessment provides a whole wealth of information about which conditions, if any, you know, need to be applied. A day, we're processing anyone from a minor charge of simple assault all the way to murder. And we are a 24-hour operation, so as soon as the arrest begins, our work begins. Once he gets here from the police district, we begin interviewing the defendant. Take that information along with his criminal history and we create what we call the bail report. And that recommendation is the key. I think here at pretrial, we really firmly believe that we can effectively supervise people in the community without using money. For the most part, persons who are charged with low-level felonies and most misdemeanors, unless they have a serious criminal record, you know, are going to be released on some conditions, all the way up to our high-intensity supervision program, which requires placement of a GPS bracelet on them, where we can monitor a curfew or stay-away conditions as ordered by the judge. Pretrial services provides to me a report, and in that report, are the individual's ties to the community. Criminal history is included. Medical history is included. Mental health related history is included. All of those things taken together make it a lot easier for me to decide what to do. We have programs that allow for judges to place individuals into the community, but with further conditions another release modem, if you will. My name is Eugene Isaac. I'm from Washington, D.C. I'm an ex-offender, returned citizen. I end up down in drug court and was a felony. Went out there and tried to sell some drugs to an undercover police officer and um, 
to support my habit. I went in front of the judge, and by my record, I haven't had a charge in almost 20-some years. I got out on personal recognizance. Told my casework, I said, I just need a chance. I need an opportunity, you know? And um, for some reason, she believed in me. She was able to get me into a detox at Providence Hospital in um, August the 7th of 09. That was my last time I had a drink or a drug. You know, I knew this was the end for me uh, to turn my life around. My daughters really, you know, they, they was really separate from me. I wasn't really a father to them, you know, because I was so caught up into the drug thing. But now we got, we got an awesome relationship. And to this day, me and my daughters, we made a pact that we have nothing that's going to break us apart. If it's something we have a problem with each other, we're going to have to go out and talk about it. As long as I stay alcohol and drug free, my kids will be in my life, you know, and, and, and I won't give that up for nothing anymore. This is something I always wanted. One obstacle to any kind of reform in the system is just inertia. We have this irrational view that the way to lead to less crime is to cage people who we think committed those crimes. There's no evidence to support it, and yet it's the foundational premise of our criminal legal system. It is an outrageous case of justice derailed. How could it take three years for prosecutors in the Bronx DA's office to figure out they didn't have a case while a teenager sat in jail on Rikers? You made a decision that you were going to fight this. That's correct. How'd you come to that conclusion? Because I didn't feel comfortable saying I did it. If I just cop out and say that I did it, nothing's going to be done about it. I didn't do it. No justice is served. Nobody hears nothing at all. I, I felt like I had to fight. I had to fight. Cleve Browder case was a tragedy. A lot of people have become aware of the problem now because of a high profile case like that. Uh, but the need for reform has been there for a long, long time. And in a case where it's $1,000 or less of a bail, only about 18% of people are able to make that bail. My legislation would do away with bail entirely. It would not even be an option in court anymore. Judges would have three new options. They could propose a conditional release, they could release someone on their own recognizance, or in the most serious cases, can remand them to jail. And that would follow after a recommendation from a pretrial services agency that would be established. We're portrayed as these evil bail bondsmen that make money, and senators make money. Judges make money. Everybody has to feed their families. I pay every single tax dollar my accountant tells me to pay. I pay every single one of them. Does your grandson have a criminal defense attorney? You know, I always say with our business, with Empire, it's like the state might be able to come in here. They're not going to find fugazi crap. They're not going to find corruption. They're not going to find all kinds of Hullabaloo. My name is Michelle Eskenazi. I'm the CEO at Empire Bail Bonds. Um, I'm also the CEO at Empire Bonding and Insurance Co., which is our family-owned bail insurance company. Okay. Did you go to court today? Yeah. You look like you went to court today. You are fabulous. How's your case going? The reason that I think that uh, the government seeks to move to a system of pretrial release is because there's a financial motivation in it. I mean, they see that there's money on this side of the coin, if you will. What's your number? That's that for real? No. Yeah, what, why, do we seem like we're not for real? If the taxpayers in New York City could possibly have their choice, I guarantee you they would choose parks and streets and helping the homeless rather than funding pretrial release services. Just relax, man, this, you know, this ain't Rikers Island. Calm down. Well, the argument that doing away with bail would be more expensive is completely facetious because, yes, the bail bondsman may not cost the taxpayers any money, but keeping someone in jail costs the taxpayers a tremendous amount of money, and New York alone is over a billion dollars a year. The bail bondsmen are not getting paid by the government while they're out there making sure that someone shows up, but that doesn't account for the thousands and thousands of people that are in jail every day awaiting trial who shouldn't be. 
One of the things that New York City really didn't put their heads together and think about is low-level offenders. So you're releasing people on misdemeanors and violations, and they, now they fail to appear. Who's going to pick them up? There's no answer. This, this gentleman here is the best bail enforcement agent, period. What I always say about him is if you're running from him, you better keep running. He will devote the rest of his God-given life to finding you. Hold your dog! Hold your dog! He's gonna get shot right in the fucking head! Hold your dog! Hold the dog! Hold your shot. dog! We're gonna knock the door down! Hold your fucking dog before I shoot him! The notion of money bail, you know, might have made sense several hundred years ago when someone could flee on horseback to a different jurisdiction and you needed to incentivize someone to go down and get them and bring them back and then reward them for it. Most people charged with crimes now in our legal system are impoverished people who've never left the geographic area in which they are alleged to have committed a crime. Got shoes in there, bro? Grab it. All right, well, tell your brother to bring you some shoes. You want to go to jail like that? Well, put your shoes. Turn around. Put your shoes on. This is not about making money or losing money. This is about people losing their freedom, losing their liberty, and spending time in jail when they have not been convicted of a crime. When that's happening, something is dreadfully wrong, and we need to change it, no matter the cost. We shouldn't be afraid to make reforms and to make things better because of an of an industry concern in this case. We are a unique insurance policy because we are not insuring a vehicle. We are insuring human behavior. So we're involved in that human behavior with the circle of love. Do you know who signed for you? Do you know that there's people that actually give a fuck about you that signed for you $15,000 worth? Does that even occur to you? Yeah, and I'm not you didn't you're, you're full of shit. Okay, don't fucking lie to me because you're full of shit, okay? Because you didn't come in here the next fucking day and try to clear up your warrant, like every change. other fucking asshole. You didn't come change. in here and try to clear up your fucking warrant, did you? No, I was gonna go to the Because court. you don't give a shit about your family, isn't that right? No, you're full I of shit. I went to court. I'm gonna make sure the judge doesn't set bail on your risky ass. I hope you bend over for the soap when you get in there. Give him a fucking shirt, okay? I was there, man. I, okay. I, I messed up. But, right, I know you messed up. I'm not trying uh, to You're very good at that. No, uh, they, they changed the court. Why did you get arrested? Because you're an upstanding citizen? No. I oh. had a drug problem before I went in. Oh, okay. Fine. Well, I swear to you, man. I'm worried that if we don't address these issues now, in this moment where people are finally paying attention, we'll never do it. If somehow we lose that outrage and we go back to being the society of indifference and inertia, in these areas, the policies of the last three or four decades that have wrought so much devastation in, in impoverished communities will be made a permanent feature of American society. The bail bonding industry, which I get very tired of talking about, they aren't really the issue. Money is the issue. If once you do away with money, the bondsmen go away. Money pervades the justice system. Money pervades America. You're gonna have all these people that are gonna be running around with warrants, and then they're gonna say, we need more government money, i.e. taxpayer money, to pay for to lock these people up when you didn't have to do it in the first place. If somebody shows me that it's more economical and it's smarter, then I guess I'll find something else. Maybe I'll fucking make pizzas. You know what I mean? Maybe I'll ride a dirt bike and become a 12 o'clock boy.